The usual uh, trees formula as developed by uh, Arthur is a powerful tool in the theory of automorphic forms. And uh, it uh, enables to uh, establish some cases, some particular but uh, fundamental cases of uh, functoriality. For example, the, uh, Arthur uh, was able to, to classify the automorphic representation of uh, classical groups in terms uh, of uh, uh, automorphic forms, uh, automorphic representation of uh, general uh, linear groups. So if you, uh, if you look at the Corvallis uh, volumes, then you will see that there is already a contribution of Arthur in the 70s, and the, the trace formula has been developed by Arthur for 40, 40 years. And the, the relative trace formula, as envisioned by, by Jacquet and others, should be a useful tool in the relative long lens program. And it is not as mature as the usual trace formula. So what I want to do uh, in this lecture is uh, to, uh, to present some uh, general principle in a, in a quite a simple setting uh, of some examples of the relative trace formula and uh, sketch some uh, application. So uh, let me begin um, uh, with some uh, notation and uh, some uh, notions. So F will be the number field, and uh, A will be the ring of adults. So you, you saw this ring uh, in the case uh, where F is Q yesterday. And uh, I will uh, um, consider G a connected, reductive, group over F, and for simplicity, um, I will assume uh, that uh, the center is uh, anisotropic, that is a maximal split central torus in G is in fact trivial. So in the, in the group theory, uh, the, the, center, the centers are always a problem. Um, so I will denote G, uh, bracket G, as a quotient of the adelic point of G by the rational point. And uh, as in a Sophie's talk, I will introduce the space of a square integrable function on bracket G. So this is a space of complex functions such so that uh, the square modulus of phi uh, is convergent integrated over G bracket for some uh, R measure uh, on, uh, on GA and we take the, the quotient of the R measure by the, uh, the counting uh, measure on GF. So, uh, on this space, we have uh, an action of GA by a uh, right uh, translation, and it is a major uh, achievement of Langlands uh, to, uh, uh, that he, he was able to decompose uh, these uh, this representations. So, let me briefly say uh, something about the, the decomposition. So first, we can distinguish two close uh, subspace, one which is called discrete, and the other which is called continuous. So the continuous part, so perhaps uh, I can begin with the discrete part. So the discrete part, as we saw yesterday, this is a um, Hilbert sum of irreducible sub-representation, whereas the continuous part is described by an uh, integral of Eisenstein series. And these uh, Eisenstein series are built, are built upon 
uh, discrete representation, but for Levy, Levy subgroups of G. So there is some kind of recursion in the descriptions. And uh, uh, in the uh, discrete part of the spectrum, uh, we can consider two factors. One which is the cuspidal part. So cuspidal means uh, that we have a cuspidality condition, and the, in these settings, this means that we consider phi, the function phi, such that the constant term the constant term vanishes. So what is the constant term? We integrate over bracket and p. So what is p? p is a proper parabolic subgroup. So this is for any proper parabolic subgroup defined over f. And the uh, np is a unipotent radical. So this is a reminiscent uh, uh, from uh, the notion of uh, a cuspidal modular form. So uh, forms uh, for which the first Fourier coefficient uh, vanishes. So this, uh, this gives you a closed subspace of the discrete part. And uh, we have a complement. And the complement is called the residual, the residual, the residual spectrum. And this uh, residual spectrum uh, can be, so uh, according to Langlands, can be uh, constructed from uh, residues of Eisenstein series built upon a cuspidal, the cuspidal part of the spectrum for Levy subgroups. So once again, there is some recursions in the, in the process. So in some sense, the most, uh, most important part of the spectrum is the cuspidal spectrum. So this is the most uh, mysterious, in some sense, part. And, but from the analytic point of view, this is the easiest part. And uh, itself, so the, the cuspidal part of the spectrum. So this is a sum of uh, irreducible representation with some multiplicities. The multiplicities are finite, so this is uh, known by, uh, by Gelfand uh, and uh, Piatesky Shapiro. This is not, uh, not, uh, difficult, uh, not as difficult as the Langlands decomposition. Uh, and the pi which appear here, so when the multiplicity, so the multiplicity is finite. And when the multiplicity is uh, positive, is non negative, um, positive, um, I will say that pi is a cuspidal automorphic representation of G or of GA. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is the cuspidal spectrum. Voilà. So we are, we are in fact interested in the relative program, uh, relative Langlands program, uh, by cuspidal representation, by, uh, uh, which uh, satisfy other conditions. And uh, uh, this condition can be um, stated as, uh, as follows. So we fix H, a connected reductive subgroup of G. We, we will consider pi a cuspidal automorphic representation. 
and uh, I will consider a subspace. So um, I will denote so L two pi is the isotopic component or L two. Um, The, the isotopy component in the cuspidal spectrum. And I will consider a subspace of smooth uh, vectors. So inside, uh, inside uh, this vector. And uh, uh, on this space, I will consider the following uh, linear forms. So pH. Which is given by integration. Uh, over bracket H. So bracket H is uh, as usual. HA mod HS of uh, phi, phi h g h. So this depends, this depends on the choice of uh, R measure on h f and uh, on the quotient, I take the quotient measure. But the point we are interested uh, on a representation for which uh, the linear form uh, does not vanish. So pH is called the H period. And uh, we will see that pi is as H distinguished if and only if. So the period does not vanish uh, as a linear form. OK. So uh, why does it have to be reductive? So it, it does not have to be reductive, but uh, it is my setting. Okay, I will, I will uh, give you some, some remark. Uh, just, uh, just to observe that uh, the cuspidal, so this is a, a smooth uh, and cuspidal uh, uh, function, and uh, as such, it is rapidly decreasing, and the, the period is well defined. Uh, okay, so as uh, Yanis uh, observed, this is not the most general setting. Sometimes it may be useful to consider, uh, to consider integration against an automorphic character or an automorphic forms. Or sometimes it is useful to uh, consider uh, non-reductive group. For example, uh, you can consider a quasi-speed group and you can consider uh, the unipotent radical of the Borel with, uh, and, uh, and the generic character in the sense of uh, Olivier yesterday and uh, you can look at the Fourier coefficient of uh, your automorphic form. So this is also a very, a very interesting context but uh, for this lecture, uh, I will restrict myself to, 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 such, a, to such a setting. Okay. So why, uh, why, it is, uh, why is this uh, notion uh, uh, of a distinction, of H distinction is, uh, is interesting? Well, um, it should be uh, related to uh, Langlands factorialities, and also it should be, uh, in some cases, at least related to special values uh, of automorphic forms. So let me just briefly give some uh, some uh, examples. So one example uh, is G 
is a GLN cross GLN plus one. And uh, GLN is a diagonally embedded in G. So this is my group H. And the Rankin-Selberg uh, construction of uh, L function relates, in fact, such periods uh, to, uh, to the central value of the Rankin-Selberg uh, L function of the cuspidal representation pi of my group GLN cross GLN plus one. Uh, the gan cross prasad conjecture, for example, we have a similar setting for the orthogonal group. And once again, once again, the, uh, the, the HD extension and the period should be related to a special value of, uh, of an L function. A quite uh, general uh, interesting setting, for example, is uh, when you take G, you take an involution, and you look at H, the fixed point, or the connected component of the fixed point of the evolution. So this means, for example, you take E over F, a quadratic extension, and you look at uh, G's GLN E, and the subgroup H is GLN F. And for example, the GLN F distinguished representation should be related to automorphic representation of unitary group by a Langlands functoriality. There's a question on this course that is there are classical description of the residue spectrum of CO2. Uh, yes, you get uh, the characters. Okay. And also, in this case also, the period should be related to a special value uh, of an L function, an SI L function. If this exists, it's natural to draw N, or you can generalize it to other Galois. The construction of L function uh, is for GLN, I think. Uh, but uh, I mean, for the phenomenon that, like, if the period of Norwegian is should relate to the so this is so in general this should be a goal for the relative trace formula, for example. So no special. In some cases, you you may hope to um, to relate distinction for a complicated group, say, to a, a simple group, say a GLN, for example. So you can uh, you can try to to pull back the known result on GLN. To, to your group, for example. This is a, a principle for, for the use of the quality trace formula. Okay, so now let me uh, speak about automorphic kernels. So we don't want to consider an automorphic, a cosplay automorphic representation in isolation. You want to consider uh, all of them together. So I will consider the space of a test function, so uh, smooth and compactly supported functions. So this is an algebra for the convolution product. And uh, it acts. Uh, on the right, uh, on the uh, L2 space. So I, 
let me denote R this, uh, this action. So for, uh, for any F we have an operator R of F and uh, this operator is in fact an integral operator and the kernel which uh, I call uh, automorphic kernel is given by so this is a function of uh, two variables and it is given by the sum of a rational point of G of f of x minus 1 gamma y so f is uh, compactly supported so the, the rational points have uh, to be uh, in a compact subset and uh, since it is discrete the sum is in fact uh, finite okay so it is a uh, it's a, a well uh, well defined function it is uh, it is smooth on uh, the two variables and moreover you see that uh, r of f uh, preserves uh, preserves the decompositions so l2 cusp plus l2 residual plus l2 continuous so we can accordingly write uh, the kernel uh, as a k cusp plus k residual plus k continuous and uh, since uh, L2 cusp is uh, the sum over the cuspidal automorphic representation of the factor L2 pi we have also, so I will denote uh, pi the set of uh, cuspidal representation and so we have also a decomposition of k cusp according to the decomposition of L2 cusp of k, of k pi and uh, as I said, so the, the cuspidal part has, uh, has better uh, analytic properties so in particular, uh, this, uh, this kernel is, uh, is rapidly decreasing uh, in the variable x and y, whereas uh, the whole kernel is uh, only slowly uh, increasing. Okay, and uh, for the k pi, we have a, a spectral uh, a spectral description. Notion integral. This means uh, okay. So this means that uh, the action is given by integration So are you introducing the decomposition of capital K from the decomposition of L two? If so. Uh -huh. So we do you deduce this de decomposition of K from the decomposition of L2? Yes. And so how does that work? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I will give you the the expression for K pi, for example. So it, it depends on F, huh, but uh, I forgot to mention it in, in the notation. So uh, we can take the sum of d pi, so this is some uh, orthonormal basis of v pi 
a new son. Uh, so you have the action of f uh, on phi evaluated at x times phi bar. OK. So now, so now you, you can look at the h. We can try to recover the h distinguished automorphic spectrum from the kernel, at least from the cuspidal part of the kernel. As distinguished cuspidal um, cuspidal spectrum. So as I, as I said, the cuspidal part of the kernel has a better analytic property, is uh, rapidly decreasing. So we can integrate the kernel, say over the second variable, over h. So I don't, uh, I don't want k here, but k cusp, because uh, the continuous part is much more, much more difficult from the analogy point of view. So it has, we can, we can decompose it, we can, this is a sum over the cuspidal representations of h of kp x y dy. And uh, each integral is a sum of phi v pi rf phi x times the period of phi. So by integrating over h, over h, we uh, end up only with uh, h distinguished uh, cuspidal representation. So this, uh, this integral contains all the information about, about the h distinguished uh, automorphic spectrum, cuspidal automorphic spectrum. Okay, but in practice, when we want to extract information from this, it is more convenient to also integrate over the variable x. So, so we are going to do this. And uh, so, of course, I could integrate also over h. But uh, in application, it is interesting to introduce another uh, reductive group, h prime. So h prime in, uh, is another, say, connected. Of course, we, we could uh, take something which is not reductive and so on, but I will restrict myself to this setting. And I will consider the double integral over h prime and h of the cuspidal part of the kernel. And so uh, you get a sum over pi using this decomposition of uh, something I call p pi of f, or more correctly, this should be noted g h h prime f, but uh, for the lectures, this is simply j pi of f. And what is j pi of f? This is what is called a relative character. So this is defined as a sum over an orthonormal basis, as before, of the period along h prime of rf acting on phi times the complex conjugate of the h period of phi. So this is a relative current. Uh, so here we have a sum over cuspidal automorphic representation. But because the period of h prime and h appears, here the spectrum is reduced to uh, uh, representations that are both uh, h and h prime distinguished. So this formula, maybe I can write it 
here. So the cus cusp integrating over h prime and h is the sum over g pi of f. And this is the spectral expansion. So in some sense, this is the spectral expansion, at least the, the cuspidal part of the spectral expansion of the relative trace formula. And in some sense, the relative trace formula, um, the goal of the relative trace formula is to give another expression uh, for this, for this uh, uh, spectral expansion. So this expansion should be in part based on Langland decomposition. So it is based on the discrete or uh, cuspidal um, representation, but for smaller uh, levis subgroups. So it should be more elementary in some sense. And in part, on a, on contribution of a, a different nature that uh, we we'll, uh, we shall see now. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you are presenting it, it looks like different from the Arthur Selberg trace formula, but we know that it isn't. The Sel Arthur Selberg trace formula is a special case. Can you explain why? Later, if you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so I do, uh, so I want to to get another expression for this, and uh, in order to do this, I will put a restriction on the group. Uh, so what can I use? So this is reality trace formula, but for the anisotropic case. So my assumption is that the group G is reductive and uh, anisotropic, connected, reductive, and anisotropic over F. So this means that there is no non-trivial split torus uh, in G. So it has other uh, consequences. For example, um, all rational elements of G um, are semi-simple. Uh, we can say also that the quotient bracket G, so GA by GF is compact. And also, this implies that uh, G has no proper parabolic subgroup defined over F. Sorry? Uh, un caractéristique zéro. Oh, okay. <laughs> non, en fait, c'est pour les, pour les, pour les unipotents. Uh, no proper parabolic subgroup uh, defined over F. So, okay, so from the Langlands decomposition, uh, this uh, last assertion is particularly nice because uh, you see that the cuspidal part of the spectrum is defined by a condition uh, of a vanishing constant term uh, attached to proper parabolic subgroup. So this condition is empty. And so the cuspidal uh, uh, part of the spectrum is the whole spectrum. So this is a real simplification. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the kernel is a cuspidal part of the kernel. And so we have automatically the spectral expansion of 
So let's say h prime, h prime, h prime cross h of k. And so the spectral expansion is uh, the right hand side here. Okay, so um, it's okay for the spectral, the spectral expansion. So now, uh, as I said, we are looking for uh, um, an expansion of a different nature. And uh, for this, I have to remember that uh, uh, the kernel, the whole kernel, has a simple expression. And what can I do is to uh, expand expand its sum according double cosets. So I can write gamma as a set, say, of representatives of the double cosets. And for gamma, in gamma, I can write h prime times h sub gamma as a centralizer of gamma in h prime cross h. So this is for the action h prime acts on the left and uh, h uh, acts on the right. So in this way, I can write this as uh, the sum of a gamma of k gamma of x and y, so k, k gamma x and y is, is just the sum of our rational points, but inside the orbit of gamma. So this is the sum of our delta 1, delta 2, it's, uh, h prime cross h of f divided by the centralizer of uh, f uh, x minus 1, Delta 1 minus 1, gamma, delta 2, y. So, okay. And now, we, we are going to integrate the kernel over h prime cross h, and uh, we will permute the sum and the integral. So what I get is the following expression. So this is a sum uh, over the element gamma, in capital gamma, of uh, what? Of a coefficient a gamma and the distribution j gamma f. So what are these, uh, these objects? Well, so j gamma is what we call a global orbital integral. So this is an adelic integral over the orbit of gamma. Okay, so to do, to do so, so here, uh, here I use, uh, there are measures uh, that uh, is uh, implicit, implicitly uh, inside the definition of the, the period as a linear form. And here I use another uh, R measure. Uh, so, first, so first let me observe that uh, H prime 
cross uh, H uh, gamma is in fact reductive. So here, here it is uh, automatic because uh, it is uh, H prime cross H is uh, anisotropic because uh, G is uh, anisotropic. So this group uh, is uh, unimodular and uh, it has, uh, so, so it admits uh, R measure. So I choose one to define the orbital integral. And with this choice, I can define the coefficient A gamma. A gamma is a volume of uh, H prime cross H. So the, this is the volume of the centralizer inside bracket. So this group is reductive and uh, anisotropic. So this bracket is compact and the volume is finite. And the product, the product uh, of the coefficient A gamma and J gamma does not depend on the choice of the measure, of course, because we take the same. Okay, so um, in our setting, uh, because uh, G is anisotropic and because uh, the group then, uh, then the, the, the groups H prime and H are uh, anisotropic, then the H prime cross H uh, orbit of gamma is in fact uh, closed. And uh, we can check also that uh, the, the adelic orbit is closed. It's closed. And so uh, remember that uh, the function is completely supported. So we integrate over a closed orbit inside GA. Uh, so we, in fact, the integral is over a compact. And so the the orbital integral is finite. Okay, uh, and also uh, the sum also here, we, we can show that it is finite. So I can write this as H prime plus H, okay, the sum over gamma, And this is my geometric expansion. And of course, here we say that k is k cusp, and so we have equality. And so this equality, so we have spectral expansion, geometric expansion. And so we get the relative choice formula in our setting. This is a quality of the geometric expansion and the spectral expansion. Okay. So, um, also I can observe that Uh, that the uh, orbital integral um, admits Euler product. So if F is a pure tensor, so each, uh, so here uh, the function, the components are indexed by the, the places of F. So FV is a text function On the FV point, FV is a completion at V of F uh, of G. And uh, for almost all V, FV is in fact the characteristic function over the integer points. So it has a sense. So G is defined over F. It can be defined over a ring of it integer outside uh, a finite, finite set of uh, places. Okay. And uh, 
the orbital integral can then uh, written as a Euler product of what the, of local local orbital integral. So this is the same definition, but just over the local field Fv. Of Fv. So this is a link between the say a global analysis and the local analysis. And we can show that uh, almost uh, all factors are in fact uh, one in this, uh, in this product. Okay, so we get uh, uh, we get uh, a relative trace formula uh, in the setting of uh, an, uh, an isotropic uh, group G. So to answer uh, Yannis' questions, we can look uh, at the situation where we can get the usual trace formula for uh, an, isotropic, uh, an isotropic group. So here, this, uh, uh, this will be a, a particular case of uh, our setting. So Arthur Selberg. Trust formula still in the anisotropic setting. So this is the case where we start from H anisotropic reductive. And the group G is H cross H. And uh, H is a subgroup diagonally embedded. And H prime is H. So, if I look at uh, an automorphic representation, a cuspidal, say, cuspidal automorphic representation pi of G, so I can write pi as a sigma 1 times sigma 2, so the sigma i is our uh, cuspidal augmentation of H. And uh, what does it mean uh, for pi to be H distinguished? This means that uh, sigma 2 is a contra gradient uh, of sigma 1. So in this uh, Excuse me. Can you clarify what uh, H prime is? How do you embed uh, H prime? H prime. Uh, okay. Okay. This is still diag diagonally embedded. Okay. So let me look at the relative character in this setting. Maybe uh, a comment related to the previous question is that if instead of the diagonal embedding you choose, you twist the diagonal embedding by an involution, you get the twisted trace formula. Mm -hmm. So again, that's special case of this general setup. Right. <laughs> no, not necessarily an evolution. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so um, so to get the relative characters, I have to sum over an uh, orthonormal basis. So I assume that pi is a sigma trans sigma chetch. And uh, uh, so an orthonormal normal basis for pi, uh, I can take I can take phi tens phi prime uh, bar, so this is complex conjugation, where phi and phi prime are in an in a also normal basis uh, for sigma. Um, so I have the period, the H period of F acting on phi tens phi bar times the complex conjugate of the period of phi times phi uh, prime bar. So this is nothing else but the scalar product. And you see that what you get is in fact the sum over an orthonormal basis of sigma of the action of a related function phi. So phi is in some uh, phi is a, a test function on H, and it is uh, given by a simple uh, a simple integration, a formula from uh, from F. So if, if this formula is not true, uh, uh, the true formula is close to this uh, of R or phi. Um, uh, paired with uh, with phi, so this is the trace of R of phi acting on the on the space uh, on the the sigma isotopic component uh, of L two of H. So you get really a trace. In this case, so this is the spectral contribution. And for ge the geometric contributions, mm -hmm. so pi, pi, this pi. is uh, no, this R is a cuspidal. R of P. Uh, ah. What? Sorry. What's the what's the capital P? The capital P. So this is a test function on H, which is deduced from a test function on G, by a simple formula. Function of eight, tensor test function of eight. That's just a convolution, essentially, right? And we can also write the geometric side. So we are in the situation we are looking at h cross h mod h on the right mod h. Uh, on the left, so this quotient is H, say by uh, x, y, uh, uh, maps to x, y minus 1. And so this is uh, H mod the action of H on itself by conjugation. So for the same function uh, phi, so this is this is uh, so gamma now is HF mode conjugation, and uh, the spectral uh, the geometric expansion. So this is the sum over gamma 
in capital gamma of the volume of the centralizer of gamma in bracket times the orbital interval for the same function phi of h minus 1 h j h. So this times you see that the group the group acts by conjugation. Okay, so this is uh, the equality between this expansion and so uh, so this can be written as uh, also m sigma the trace of sigma of f. So this is equality between this expansion and the sum over all uh, cuspid representation of h of m sigma times the trace of sigma of f is uh, the arthur salberg uh, trace formula in the, in the anisotropic uh, case. Okay. So now, uh, what can be uh, said uh, behind uh, the uh, anisotropic case? Um, so let me observe that uh, we are faced with uh, several uh, analytic difficulties. Not exactly F is a kind of convolution. Because uh, it's usual an isotropic tree formula you should have F on the way. No, no, but what was the question? Maybe the, the test function, so yeah, I mean, oh, but we have a, we have a simple mapping. Just because they cannot hear the questions in the back. Yeah, but I'm not the one who should repeat the question. Yeah, I can repeat it, but it won't help. Okay, so we start from a, from a function on G, and you can associate a test function on H by a simple okay, integration. It's H cross H. Okay, but you, so you didn't quite recall the usual trees formula. Because the usual trace formula, you have the same function on both sides. Yes, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, okay, now I have <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So let me discuss briefly uh, what happens for these terms uh, behind the anisotropic case. For example, if you look at SL2, if you look at, uh, so uh, H is acting, uh, is acting on uh, itself by conjugation. So if I look at uh, a diagonal matrix, say alpha um, uh, a regular diagonal matrix, then the centralizer is a multiplicative group, and the volume of the centralizer uh, is not finite. It is not compact, uh, and even the, the, the volume is infinite. So this coefficient may be infinite. If you look at the element, the unipotent element, the regular unipotent element um, here, then the the connected component of the centralizer is uh, the additive group. So the, the uh, GA bracket is finite, it is, uh, it is compact, so the, the volume is finite, but the orbital integral, the orbital integral is essentially the value at uh, one of uh, the zeta function, so it is infinite. So this, uh, the orbital integral does not converge. Uh, so moreover, in this setting, we have to take into account the continuous spectrum. The kernel is not rapidly decreasing. And uh, we see in our spectral expansion, we use, uh, uh, we use a period and the, the period of uh, Eisenstein series in general uh, do not converge because uh, Eisenstein series are of more moderate growth, but at not 
are not uh, rapidly decreasing. So uh, almost uh, everything uh, uh, breaks down in the uh, anisotropic case. So what I want to discuss now is uh, a simple relative trace formula. That is, if we put some uh, restrictions on the test function, then we can recover essentially the, the trace formula in the uh, anisotropic case. A simple okay so the idea is to put so it is to assume that say f is a, a pure tensor to choose two places v1 and v2 to put a condition on fv1 to simplify the spectral side and to put a condition on fv2 to simplify the geometric side so let me begin with the spectral side the simplification of the spectral side so uh, i will assume that Fv1 is a cuspidal is a cuspidal function. So what does it mean? So we mean that uh, for all proper parabolic subgroup of G. So so here um, here G is a connected reductive group. I um, I drop my assumptions that G is anisotropic. So there may be proper parabolic subgroup. And I assume that the local integral over the radical, the unipotent radical um, of P, this, uh, this function vanishes for all x and y in G of F, V. Oh, this function, uh, um, so in fact, are, um, are quite natural. The, the matrix coefficient of uh, a cuspidal orientation in the sense of, uh, lo the local sense of, uh, of Olivier yesterday are essentially of this type. Okay, so now with this condition, so this is this is the condition just on say on, on v1. So then this implies uh, that when you look at the constant term, the global constant term of the kernel, then it is zero. Simply you you have the geometric expression for k, you permute and uh, you, make, uh, you make such an integral uh, to appear and uh, so, uh, so you, get, uh, you get zero. So this, uh, this implies that R of f sends the wall L2 spectrum into the cuspidal spectrum and this implies that the k is k cusp and so we have a spectral expansion yeah okay
And at, so, so say V2 is uh, different for V1. So first, uh, first I observe that uh, there is an open, a dense open subset. Say G regular semi-simple of G such that um, so for all gamma in GRS, the uh, first the orbit of gamma is closed. First condition and the second condition is that the um, the centralizer is of a maximal dimension. Uh, minim, uh, no, the orbit is a, the centralizer is of minimal dimension. The orbit is of maximal dimension. Is closed. So I can phrase it as follows: the orbit is closed and of maximal dimension. So if you if you think about uh, the usual uh, action of uh, the GLN by conjugation of itself, uh, this is uh, simply the usual regular semi-simple locus. That is the locus of uh, uh, matrix um, with a separable uh, characteristic polynomial. And uh, I assume that the support of uh, AV2 is contained in the regular set, but it does not suffice, I think. And I introduce another hypothesis. I assume that for all gamma in the support of um, AV2, uh, the centralizer of gamma is uh, anisotropic. So for example, for the action of GLN on, on itself, uh, this condition is not, so it is, uh, say, FV2 anisotropic. So this condition says that uh, uh, the characteristic polynomials of elements in the support are, in fact, irreducible over, uh, over this, uh, this, uh, this field. So uh, this happens if, uh, uh, if this field is, uh, is periodic, for example. So this condition is not, empty, is not always, uh, is not always, uh, um, is not always not, non empty. But there are interesting cases where where it is non-empty. And with this, with this uh, condition, I can simplify the, the geometric side, and uh, we get the geometric expansion. So with these two conditions, I get the spectral expansion, the geometric expansion, I get the, the same kind of uh, relative choice formula, but I have a restriction on the, on the test function. So I will, in the following, I will call F nice. So if uh, FV1 and FV2 satisfy the, the hypothesis. Okay, so now uh, I have 30 minutes, I think. So I want to sketch an application of uh, a simple relative tree formula. Will not take a break. It's too late, no?
So an application, so the application uh, is for the Gan cross prasad conjecture for unitary group. And it will uh, not use uh, one relative choice formula, but two. One in the one for unitary groups and one for uh, general inner groups. So let me give the setting for unitary groups. So I fix an integer n and the quadratic extension of a number field e over f. So um, I consider a, a Hermitian space. So uh, a e-vector space of dimension n equipped with non-degenerate uh, Hermitian form. And um, I consider an Hermitian space of dimension n plus 1 by taking the orthogonal sum of uh, v uh, plus a line, say with the norm of the vector is 1. Uh, so my group G is a unitary group of V times a unitary group of W. And the group H is a group H prime. Uh, so H is a unitary group of V. And H prime is also the unitary group of V. And it is embedded diagonally in the following form. This this uh, this embedding. Uh, so this sitting is uh, is really nice because uh, the regular uh, the regular semi simple uh, locus is in fact the the gamma in G, such that um, uh, that uh, the centralizer is trivial and the orbit is of maximal dimension. Uh, no, c'est pas ça. No, sorry, the orbit is closed. So not only the, the centralizer will be anisotropic, but they, they will be trivial in this setting, in the, in the regular locus. So, uh, I will take f nice as before. So v1 and v2 will be places. Sorry, the orbit under which group f. Sorry? You say the orbit, which, what orbit? So before this was h prime and h, but now h prime is h. So this is for the action of h on the right and the action of h on the left. So this is a h cross h action. So uh, for v1 and v2, finite place, finite places of f split, split in e. So I get the I get the trace formula in the following uh, way, but now so gamma. Uh, is a set of uh, double coset. But I have simply the corresponding uh, orbital integral because uh, the centralizer uh, is trivial. Uh, so, so I suppose that f is nice, 
So only a regular, so I can put here regular semi-simple. So only regular semi-simple classes appears in the geometric expansion. And for such orbits, the centralizer is trivial. So my coefficient a gamma is trivial here. Okay, so, and uh, in the spectral side of the spectrum, we are interested in the cuspidal representation that are uh, distinguished along this uh, subgroup. And so, brief, briefly, I can give you the context of the general inner groups. So the two relative trace formula uh, I am um, I'm considering now, uh, they were uh, suggested by uh, Jacquet uh, and Rallis, so I call them Jacquet Rallis trace formula. Alors the setting is the following. The group G tilde is GLN E cross GLN plus one E. We have a group H prime, which is GLN F cross GLN plus one F. And we have a H tilde prime, which is GLN E, but uh, diagonally, diagonally embedded. So this is uh, the setting. So uh, as before, the regular semi-simple locus is uh, is really si simple. So in fact, this is the gamma in G tilde such that uh, the H tilde prime cross H tilde orbit is closed and the centralizer is trivial. So in fact, we get, so to uh, still, so we take F tilde nice with uh, V1 and V2 as before. And uh, we get uh, an expansion. So uh, an equality between a spectral expansion and the geometric expansion. So gamma tilde is uh, the following double question, question. Uh, I have to explain J uh, pil tilde, it is not exactly, <coughs> so it is built upon H tilde prime period. And the period which is not exactly the H tilde prime period. In fact, uh, it is given by integration um, against the character. So here, here I have a quadratic character character of uh, the Adel of F attached by class field theory to E over F and N tilde is essentially on each component. Uh, so we have the determinant on each component 
but I have to put an exponent, an exponent depending on the uh, rank of the group. Okay, so we have such a character. And uh, I don't uh, look at the H tilde period, but I twist by this character. In fact, I have also to, to divide by the center because here uh, the center is non trivial, but I prefer to, to write this like this. And also, the orbital integral is also twisted by the character. So, in fact, what we do here is instead of integrating uh, a k, we integrating k over over uh, uh, eta tilde of h. Okay. So now let me give the principle of the comparison. We will compare the two trace formula. So first, let me analyze the spectral sides. So spectral sides. So for G, for G, we look at cuspidal representation that are H distinguished. And by the DGP conjecture, if pi is H distinguished, then the central value of the Rankin-Selberg attached to pi tilde is not zero. And what is pi tilde, this is an automorphic representation of g tilde, which is given by the base change of pi. So what does it mean in this context? Um, this means, in fact, this characterizes uh, pi tilde. This means that uh, for almost all places of f, split in the quadratic extension. Um, the pi tilde at v is in fact pi v tends pi v h. So in fact, so if the place, um, if we have a place of f which is split in E, when you look at uh, your, uh, the group G at FV, this is simply a product of linear groups. And uh, this uh, tensor product is a representation of the product of the two groups, but at a, at a place which uh, split in E, the group G tilde is precisely the product. So this, uh, this has a meaning. And if you have this condition at uh, almost all places of F split in E, uh, then your automorphic representation pi tilde is necessarily the base change in the, in the sense of functoriality of pi. And what is uh, the analysis for d tilde? So you get cuspidal representation, which are h tilde prime distinguished, but by the rankin selberg Theory, this implies that the value at one half of pi tilde is uh, non-zero. And uh, 
we have representations that are also H distinguished, or I should say H eta tilde distinguished. So because uh, we consider not only the period along H tilde, but the period twisted by uh, eta tilde, and by the, say, the assay uh, L function theory, uh, no, um, no. Uh, and this, this condition should imply that precisely pi tilde should be a base change, should be a base change of a, represent, of a representation of a unitary group, so, so of a representation of G, but uh, of G in a broad sense. Excuse me? Uh, what is so J tilde is, is still the J tilde that is on the uh, top four? Oui, uh, yes. Is it explained on, on the left what does it mean that pi tilde is, is this tensor product when J tilde is essentially GLN times N plus one? Yes, so I, I mean that uh, at a place that uh, that uh, splits in E, uh, the, the second group G tilde is essentially the product of the of the first one. You get you get two copies of GLN, and uh, the unitary group is is one GLN. That is GLN times GLN plus one. Yes. So yes. So two copies of the, the product. They are, they, are, they, are, they are a product of the product. Ah, so pi is a representation of GLN times GLN plus 1. Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So this is the analysis on the spectral side. So we are, in some sense, in a good shape because... Um, the two, the two uh, spectral sides should have more or less the same uh, spectrum. And what about the geometric sides? First, should it be h bar prime instead of h tilde prime? Sorry? Is h bar prime? h tilde prime for the first one? Or h tilde. Ah, so just the yeah. so GL and E diagonally. Diagonally, yes. They are supposed to be written then. Yeah, it was always a tilde. Uh, I forget something. Okay, okay. Hello, <laughs> okay. on the geometric side. The first point is that, so we have a, a set of regular semi-simple double classes for G, a set gamma tilde uh, of uh, regular semi-simple classes for G tilde, and in fact, uh, we have an injection like this. And uh, the point is that for all test function on uh, G of A, there exists a test function such that the orbital integral The orbital integral of uh, f tilde is zero if uh, gamma tilde does not belong 
to gamma and g gamma tilde of f tilde is g gamma of f if gamma is the image uh, is gamma tilde is the image of uh, of gamma so this this uh, this in fact a local statement about local orbital integral which is uh, quite easy if at uh, the places uh, that uh, split in E, but uh, for the other uh, places, this is a deep uh, theorem of uh, Wei Zhang, and uh, we also need that at all, most all places, so I will say that F tilde is a transfer of F, and uh, we'll need that at all, almost all places, uh, the component uh, of uh, F tilde and F as a characteristic function of the uh, OV point of G tilde and G, and this is a uh, this is uh, the fundamental lemma in the situation, and it is known by, by the work of several people. I can mention Yoon and, uh, and Buzar PC. Uh, okay, and moreover, if I assume that F is nice, I can assume that F tilde is also nice. So, from this, I get the equality of the geometric sides uh, of the Jacquard-Alice trace formula for G and the relative trace formula for G tilde. And so we have equality equality of uh, the spectral size. But now starting Starting from a, from a H distinguished representation pi of G, with some condition, I suppose that P V one is supercuspidal, and that pi V two is tempered. I can find a nice test function. So that the spectral side, say spectral expansion for G, is simply one contribution, that of pi. And moreover, because pi is H distinguished, it is non-zero. But to have this, this contribution, uh, if, I, if I want this contribution not to vanish, even with, so, um, even assuming that F is nice, I have to put extra condition, extra local condition on the representation. And so, this is the extra, the spectral expansion of G tilde for F tilde. And uh, using the fact that we can, we have, we have a lot of uh, test function here, uh, I can uh, also see that the spectral expansion, I can uh, use function f and so f tilde, so that the spectral expansion of g tilde reduces to one contribution, that of pi tilde, with pi tilde is a base change of pi. So this is what uh, the, the trace formula uh, gives. So you see that we deduce that the j pi tilde of f tilde is non-zero because we have equality from the geometric sides. So we deduce that the representation pi tilde is in particular h tilde prime distinguished. And we say that if representation pi tilde is h prime tilde distinguished, then, so this is non-zero and so the value at one half of pi tilde is non zero. So this gives you, uh, in this setting, one, uh, one assertion in the gan gross prasad conjecture for, uh, for unitary groups. So I think I will stop here.
Are there any questions? Um, can you not turn the argument around? And do you not get the other assertion of GGP? Uh, yes. So the other assertion, uh, so here I consider two relative trace formula, but uh, in fact you have to consider several trace formula because you have to take into account, um, say, uh, different uh, Hermitian forms, so different pure inner forms of the unitary groups. Because uh, so the converse is, uh, is the existence of a unitary group. Um, because uh, not everybody has the question. You want to ask the Oh, so I'm asking the two implications here, like are they equivalent and like is the second uh, information uh, related to the weak realist uh, period? Like, not so the, the first one is a consequence of Rankin-Selberg uh, the theory. So you have a di direct link between periods and the value at uh, one half. And the second uh, one is a say a consequence of faster classification for uh, unitary groups. Okay. But in the GPD uh, if and only if uh, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if it is like all local places are also H prime way distinguished and the faster condition of the now anything of the global uh, function is a uh, if and only if condition. Can you also deduce this from your do you have to choose formula comparison? Um, um, you, 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 say you have the existence, for example, uh, I don't think that we have unicity. Uh, at one point, you, you, you can put inside the machine the local results. For example, if you, have unicity, if you want unicity, Sorry. Okay, so maybe we'll stop here and uh, the next talk will be in 20 minutes and then we'll have a Q&A session.